We are back. Sam Cedar on the Majority Report on the phone. It is a pleasure to welcome to the program Jordan Charidon. He's just uh, returned from uh, North Dakota, is my understanding. Literally has just returned or has not even quite returned, per se. Um, f- uh, Jordan, welcome to the program. Hey, Sam. How are you? I'm doing well. Did I just say uh, TYT reporter? Sorry, a little discombobulated. All right, so, uh, Jordan, thanks for joining us. I know you've just literally gotten off an, an airplane. Uh, tell me, what? Uh, how long were you out in, uh, at Standing Rock? I was there for two days. I got there Monday and kind of hit the ground running and uh, just leaving today. And so uh, give me a sense of, 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 of what you saw, uh, how many folks are protesting, and um, uh, just do your, your general impressions. Yeah, uh, there's a main, main camp uh, that has thousands of people uh, kind of camping out there. There are Native people who are from North Dakota there, but there's also a very big portion that's from out of state. Uh, Native Americans from around the country who have come in to kind of show their support to the local tribes fighting this pipeline. Um, There's actions every single day. Uh, They call some of the actions soft actions, which is the more peaceful kind of protest, and then harder actions, which include uh, Native Americans chaining themselves to some of the construction bulldozers and machines. So I was able yesterday to uh, interview a brother and sister, both uh, separately chained themselves to construction machines, which ended up, uh, you know, thwarting uh, construction for the day. Uh, You know, obviously they can't use the machines if there's humans chained to them. Um, So I saw and did interviews from scenes like that. I also went into some of the local uh, camps that uh, Native tribes actually live in year-round. And, uh, you know, witnessed everything from ceremonies to how they how they live daily. Uh, the mood is definitely tense. There, it kind of goes from sadness to anger to joy <laughs> uh, within the hour because mm-hmm. there's a lot of uh, music and celebration and dancing that goes on, too. And, and give me your sense of uh, my understanding is that the, there's um, the 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 outside the the attendance of outside tribes is uh, nearly unprecedented, at least in the in the past couple of decades. Um, is that is that the case? Yeah, that's that's actually what several people I spoke to told me that they haven't had this kind of congregation of tribes in more than 150 years. Oh, wow. Um, and more people are uh, kind of coming in uh, as we speak. Um, I have, I've had many, many people reach out to me uh, asking if it's too late, if they could come. Um, what's interesting also is it's not just Native Americans. Uh, I've, saw, I've seen a lot of, you know, progressive, uh, Caucasian uh, volunteers and just people who are taking an interest. I think one, one thing I've really noticed, and even within myself, is, you know, obviously we know our history and we know the Native Americans have been, uh, you know, disregarded, treated, treated poorly. But uh, you don't really know to the level <laughs> until you're there. And um, very powerful interviews I've been able to do. Uh, one, one Native American uh, in, a, in a tribal ceremony I witnessed kind of broke down in tears, you know, telling America to wake up. And, uh, you know, the Native Americans forgave uh, have forgiven and moved and moved past our history, uh, obviously of Native Americans um, being displaced and, and murdered. Um, but how much more forgiveness can can we offer as you as you try to you know bulldoze our sacred burial sites and taint our waters? So there's there it's really ground zero, I would say, for the Native American tribes, but also uh, people around America that are now uh, really waking up a little bit to how Native Americans are still being treated. I mean, in terms of the people who have come there uh, to support the, uh, uh, the Standing Rock Sioux tribe, um, and, and, and particularly outside of other tribal populations, I mean, give me a sense of, of what the, uh, uh, what's driving that. Is it an environmental? I mean, I, I, are they environmental activists? Are they... Uh, a Native American activist. I mean, how is that? Um, uh, 
uh, how is all that sort of that 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 pastiche, if you will? How is that uh, sort of coming together? Yeah, I would definitely say the biggest the biggest block of people coming in are actually Native Americans from around the country. Um, you know, if I had to give you a rough estimate, I'd say maybe you know thirty percent are uh, non Native Americans uh, that I that I've come into uh, meeting. I think uh, it's kind of a mix, you know. I, I don't think it's just it's not just the Greenpeace kind of folks out here and environmentalists. You know, I met many people that kind of I met on the road from the Bernie the Bernie movement um, who who are here, uh, progressive people. Uh, you meet, meet a lot of people who are kind of just working in their daily lives, um, and this stood out to them. A lot of people from Minnesota, uh, for some reason. I, I must have met a, a block of 50 people from Minnesota who drove over. Um, so I think there are environmentalists, but there's also just a very big block of progressives um, and kind of Green Party members, because this, this story kind of merges uh, environmentalism with racism, um, with with all those things and also there's a lot of people i met that were on the front line on keystone xl that are also here so i'd say it's a good mix of a lot of environmentalists but also a lot of just progressives who uh are fighting against you know what they deem to be another case of corporate greed um give me the to the extent that you know in, in, as you were reporting out there what how the the pipeline came to be um, uh, situated or planned to be situated a half a mile uh, um, upriver from the reservation when originally it was supposed to be about, I think, 10 miles uh, upriver from, from Bismarck. What, wh- what do you know about that? Yeah, it was originally supposed to run through Bismarck. Uh, they, the pipeline company, Energy Transfer Partners, uh, got a, a big dose of pushback. Um, and they relented on doing it there. And, you know, the difference between Bismarck and this area, this area is way more impoverished and uh, is filled with Native Americans. So the uh, part, the oil company did not consult um, the Native Americans on this land um, and basically decided, all right, we're getting, you know, we're getting very fierce opposition up here. Bismarck is definitely a little bit more populated and is not concentrated predominantly by Native Americans. Um, so they decided to run it through pretty much right next to where burial sites are and these tribes live. Um, the Army engine of uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, um, uh, you know, apparently okayed it. And just now, after uh, the, the first construction sites kind of bulldozed uh, and desecrated these lands is when President Obama and the Army engineers came out um, in favor of that restraining order and also um, suddenly after the fact saying climate climate considerations need to be taken into effect. But essentially, Bismarck said no, the, 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 not, it's not a wealthy area, but the at, at least more stable and uh, better off economic area said no and they decided to run, run it through here. Uh, the Native Americans I spoke to uh, in the tribes said they would never consult it uh, before construction started. My understanding, too, is that the um, the EPA um, had recommended um, uh, at re- the EPA was actually one of three federal agencies that raised environmental and safety objections to the to that to that North Dakota section of the the pipeline uh and the uh u.s army corps of engineers ignored those things have you heard much about that yes yes i heard uh the same the same things and uh i i kind of heard you know the army uh and the army engineers kind of they were uh, kind of waxing and waning over distance to burial grounds and the actual distance to the tribal land saying that this is not close enough to their land. I, I read things about specific mileage uh, was their reasoning. I mean, at the end of the day, this is this is their water source. This is what they live off of. So, uh, but yeah, I I did read that the EPA 
had raised objections on climate concerns, and it was ignored. Um, and um, I guess it was also uh, the Department of the Interior, which would obviously uh, deal with um, uh, directly with the the Native American tribes, uh, raised some issues uh, in terms of the the burial grounds. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, what else uh, should we know uh, from having uh, your 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 couple days there? Yeah, I mean, I think that really outside of just the uh, you know kind of moving ceremonial things I saw, you know, it's it's not just uh, the issue of the pipeline. I mean, these Native American tribes. I, you know, I learned a lot about how there's a lot of violence within the tribes. There's a lot of outside uh, people coming in, kidnapping women. Uh, raping women. Um, there's been a very big epidemic of uh, missing women that the government has really not uh, done that much for the, for the Native American women. Uh, Jill Stein has been down here, and yesterday we got kind of a little bit of a testy exchange. She was down at the construction site that got stopped uh, due to the protesters shaming themselves. But, you know, she was trying to talk to uh, talk to some of the Natives and not not really anger towards her, but just anger at the politicians in general, basically giving them empty rhetoric. Um, they asked, you know, what are you going to do about our missing tribes women? What are you going to be? What are you going to do about the epidemic of sexual assault, uh, where we have no uh, no right to fight for ourselves and no legal defense? So outside of the pipeline, there's just other issues uh, that are very, uh, you know, that are very unique to these these people and, and this land that uh, are being more spotlighted, I would say. The other thing is it really seems that um, one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing in terms of the EPA, the Army of Engineers, President Obama kind of came in uh, after the fact. Um, it seems like this was very hastily pushed through this Native Americans' land when, you know, a more affluent or at least more I would say more traditional suburban area in North Dakota said no. There wasn't pushback by the oil company against Bismarck. As soon as they pretty much have, as soon as they got shut down, they moved on to this land. So I think um, you know it, it it is very emblematic of what's going on you know around the country. If if you can't if you can't build here, let's go find somewhere with uh, you know uh, poor and low income people. You know it's what I just saw. When I was in uh, Indiana with the light crisis going on there, they built, you know, low income housing with African Americans on top of, you know, a lead smeltering plant, essentially. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's what you're saying. It's, 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 it's unfortunate. And um, you're also seeing through this judge's ruling yesterday, half of the half of the construction was halted. But the other half, uh, unfortunately, where the burial sites are, is allowed to continue. The judge said he doesn't have jurisdiction over that land. So, oh, is that um, and, overall? And, and he doesn't have yeah. jurisdiction, uh, or she, uh, the the judge doesn't have jurisdiction over that land because it is, um, because it is, uh, it, it is not U.S. federal land. It's uh, reservation land, or what? It, what? Wh or why doesn't why doesn't the judge have fa jurisdiction over that land as opposed to the other land? That I couldn't tell you. I I didn't show up in the. I haven't read the judge. Did we just lose you? We did. Well, uh, that was uh, Jordan Chariton um, and uh, uh, from uh, the Young Turks. Uh, you can check out the Young Turks uh, site for, I imagine, the, they have already released or will be releasing Jordan's uh, videos that he's been taking down there. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed. Subscribe to our podcast, like us on Facebook, and just generally enjoy us.